Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. In today's video, I have a discussion video and the topic of today's video is why do people buy perfumes? Now, I wanna just touch base on this topic because it made me kind of curious and think, why do people buy constantly perfumes after perfumes? And these are just my personal thoughts and opinion, just all naturally. There are a few things in my mind that comes in people buying perfumes and one of the few things that I'm guessing or assuming is that People like to collect. Nowadays perfumes have become such a thing that it's become like a collector's piece. Uh, like some people can collect like handbags and shoes. There are people who like to collect fragrances slash perfumes and which is totally fine. I mean, it's uh, also some sort of kind of addiction and some sort of kind of um, not impulse buying or just a kind of need. It's the need and the desire of people needed to buy and buy it in order to build their collection, which is totally fine. You know, as I said, people collect handbags, shoes, coins, um, post stamps and stuff like that. So perfumes are something obviously very aesthetically pleasing because obviously each fragrance uh, has comes in a beautiful bottle from beautiful brands and uh, each perfume is beautifully created in terms of the scents and obviously each perfume has some sort of story behind it so as I can understand the kind of meaning behind it and so on so it doesn't matter if it's like affordable fragrance or a very expensive fragrance people like to collect a bunch of different type of kind of price points as well in a collection from low-end brands all the way to high-end brands um, is the spectrum of people collecting this kind of thing. So it's more like a collection piece. Uh, I think I t did a video in the past, some sort of weird things that people like to collect. Um, so people like to obviously collect the fragrances in general. It's, as I said, it's just like a thing that people do. It could be also a hobby. Uh, I mean, I'm not being really negative here that other to other influencers obviously collecting perfumes reviewing perfumes is also a full-time job i'm sure you guys know loads of loads of influencers and youtubers social media content creators who cre buy perfumes and review them for the views for the likes for the you know for the earning potential uh, because perfume is one of those things which is the most desirable products out there in terms of the beauty segment so fragrances is something that is really really high up there it's literally the number one um i don't know if you guys know or well, should i tell you guys this i'm sure it's not a secret for example chanel uh I'm, i honestly don't know if i should share this information but chanel you guys know they are world famous they have beautiful beautiful collections of ready to wear haute couture bags shoes accessories However, what is the most best-selling department from Chanel as a whole company? You guys must have guessed it or might not or you guys might be assuming what it is. It is in fact the number one best-selling kind of department category for Chanel is fragrances. It's insane. It's literally, literally insane. This literally blows my mind because fragrances have the power to overtake haute couture and ready to wear from Chanel. Can you guys believe it? How much are you selling of the fragrances in order to make more money than your clothes? It's actually mind blowing and think about it. It is actually crazy. I also obviously create content for perfumes. I also like to review fragrances and this kind of make me think I'm a bit more than like a kind of sailing so uh, boat. I was gonna say sailing soap, but no. Soap as well actually, sailing boat. Because I'm kinda sailing. Um, I do fragrance reviews as well, like here and there, one or two, but I'm not really like into it. Like I don't have a giant wall of fragrances because I actually receive fragrances, but I give them away because I'm not a collector, I'm not a holder. I only keep the ones that I really, really adore to myself. Like literally I have like, I would say 10 fragrances, which I really like that I've kept. Um, but I'm not a hoarder, so I don't know. I'm not a huge collector. That's why I give fragrances away uh, to my friends and family or to gifts. And um, when I compare myself to other influencers who create like content about fragrances, I'm like literally not even on the list. Like I'm not even invited on the list, basically. I can't even sit with them on the table because I barely do any reviews about fragrances. So I really don't know whether I should continue reviewing fragrances in this channel or whether I should just just stop it 
and just focus on something else, just on skincare and so on and some other beauty things. But I'm more like a confused.com. So do let me know in the comments if you guys want me to create or continue those fragrance reviews. Uh, as I said, me as an individual, I'm also huge passionate about fragrances. I love fragrances and I like to review them as well. And uh, obviously my reviews are not up to the standards of those kind of big big influencers and um, I wouldn't really, I shouldn't really compare myself to other influencers of course obviously they haven't been gone to the stores and buy them like literally on one go they've been collecting them for years and years obviously if you collect them for years and years you will build up with a nice huge collection uh, or a wall of fragrances you know like I'm sure you guys seen Mona Katan's fragrance library it's actually insane because obviously she is a beauty founder and so on so this is a different story but yeah you guys know what I mean before I go into my notes another thing I want to quickly share with you guys why do people buy fragrances again it's all designer brands it's all the necessity the designer needs uh, let's just stick with Chanel because this is the topic of this video. For example, not everyone has the um, kind of ability to go to Chanel boutique and buy a handbag or shoes or their clothes. Because let's truth be told, it is expensive. It is 2,000, 3,000 and you talk about more than 10,000 pounds for one product. So not everybody has the ability to go to Chanel and buy something. Chanel is an example. Compare this and also think about this with other so, um, luxury brands, designer brands. Um, so people can go to a Chanel fragrance counter or to Chanel makeup or cosmetics or beauty in general and they can go and buy a hundred pounds of a fragrance or of a lipstick. You know what I mean? This gives the customers and the consumers uh, the kind of kind of I would say what is the word saying it's a really really lovely word this gives them kind of like a touch of a brand this means that they are able to buy something from the brand doesn't have to be their clothes or accessories at least they have something from the brand um, you know if it's Dior or Chanel you, if you go to Dior and buy perfume you mean that means that you can buy something from the brand doesn't necessarily mean that you can go to Dior or to Chanel and buy the clothes or the accessories. People want to own something from those brands. If it's Chanel, if it's Dior, if it's something else. Uh, because this makes them kind of more, you know, nicer, more exclusive and something like that. And uh, as I said, it's again all about those abilities and budget and money. And uh, obviously in this day and age, not everybody can go and afford something from Dior and Chanel. And uh, that's why they just go to the cosmetics counter and buy something affordable that they can, um, you know, afford in order to kind of own something within that brand. And those brands is depending on the people who, or on the people, what kind of brands they like. They like might like Dior, Chanel or something like that, you know, and those are the brands that kind of are more successful because obviously whatever brands are successful, people like to own from those brands and uh, whatever brands people enjoy, like to wear or admire, they go to those counters in order to buy something so at least they have something from the, the brand. Also that's why a lot of accessories like small leather goods such as wallets, key, chains and so on like jewelry which are more like anti-price point levels and also sunglasses people can, can go and afford them because they're not crazy crazy expensive they're more into the entry level of affordability and lastly of course fragrance is all into the hygiene routine we all like to put the perfume on you know showering hair wash and then putting on your clothes and then a spritz of fragrance makes you day and kind of complete your beauty routine you know it's, it's kind of like a standard routine and the middle eastern culture it is a daily routine without the fragrance you can't literally step out of the house because it's kind of like a ritual routine that you have to, you don't have to but it is uh, common sense it is a habit like when you brush your teeth also spraying a fragrance at the middle eastern culture is a habit so this is the kind of thing also which combines cultures as well and few things i have on my phone uh, obviously the comfort of smelling clean it is vital it is important to smell clean to feel clean and of course fragrance is one of the purposes to make you feel good and make you feel clean another thing which is psychological proven is that fragrances changes your mood you uh, you know it can improve your mood it can help to change it if you are down 
it can if you spray a perfume it can literally change and boost your mood it's all like a psychological thing it's honestly true even with me when i spray a very lovely uplifting scent instantly i'm like oh wow i love it oh wow i feel so happy now you know it's literally an instant boosting kind of molecule another thing that people do is is connected with emotions and with kind of memories of course for example again when i go to holidays i take one new fragrance with me and that fragrance when i smell it like a few months later it instantly takes me back to that holiday because it kind of evokes the memories the memories are triggered it's very nostalgic Obviously, smell is one of your sensors and uh, when you smell something, you get instantly transported into that memory, into that location. Uh, hence why the Majola fragrances are really good, actually. So in here it says, perfumes have a special way of taking us through time and places, evoking emotions and making a lasting impressions of others so it's really true and of course fragrances are also much with love uh, if you have a lover or you know your partner certain fragrances remind them of the people they love and the main purpose of a fragrance is, is increasing self-appeal and self-confidence and it's also true and again it kind of triggers together combines together with the confidence with the uh, mood boosting and with the personal hygiene you know if you spray a fragrance, you instantly feel empowered, ready to go, and you basically can take the whole world because you are in control of your self-love and your self-confidence. If we see obviously those social media adverts of fragrances, adverts on TV, the girls and the guys, they walk around the world, walk around the city, really powerful and confident. This is the image the brands they want you to imagine because this is the image that perfumes want to achieve to customers to make you feel confident and comfortable and basically conquer the world. So yeah, these were all the things that I wanted to share why people buy perfumes or fragrances. I mean, there's a huge topic about it and it's huge kind of research and innovation and you know business because the market is growing and growing you see literally brands launching fragrance after fragrance it is very very overwhelming and very oversaturated in my opinion the one tip i would say just stick with your brands that you adore and love stick with the best sellers or if you don't want to be in a bestseller category stick with the niche brands and their best ones and just stick maybe with the notes that you enjoy the most you know, if we all our personal tastes are different. We all have personalities. So just stick with the fragrances that matches personality, matches your likes and dislikes. And in that thing, you can filter out the one fragrance that you might love and you might find basically and of course there's launches after launches so it's very exciting to go out and try out the new scents as well in order to like them or not like them you know we all are different and we all have different tastes and with that note i'm gonna finish this video off in here so i hope i literally i hope this video was helpful and informative um i don't know i kind of juggled quite a lot in this video it's nearly 20 minutes so hopefully i can edit this down a little bit shorter because i don't want to create a mammoth video about a topic that i want to share with you guys and if there's any other questions you guys have please leave me down below in the comments down below uh, don't forget to follow me on my socials insta and tiktok all at drama blogger i'm always always active over there thanks so much for watching until next time i will see you guys in my next video